Google is coming out with the big stick, folks. When you have a giant headline on New York Times uh, by Cade Metz, you know that it's done something big, right? So in this case, we are talking about Project Mariner, and this is this huge AI agent. And this is, okay, this is a prototype, but it can, as a, an AI agent will promise, autonomously navigate and interact with web browsers. We may have, uh, you may have seen this and caught our, even our podcast or somebody else's about uh, Anthropic and Claude with computer use. Come on, Anthropic, computer use? Seriously, that's the name of it? No, Mariner, that's the name that you want. <laughs> but guys, this is what this does. We keep hearing about agents, right? Co-pilot agents, which are essentially just custom GPTs. Salesforce is coming out with agents, which aren't really agents. All these things that we're talking about, AI agents, this is gonna rule the future. When we actually see what this starts to look like, it gets really exciting. When you see uh, Google putting out something that can take over your uh, take over your machine and actually start completing tasks, that gives me goosebumps. Jaden, what are you seeing on this? Yeah, no, I think this is super, super exciting. I, I think pretty much Anthropic coming out with their tool um, made Google dance, made everyone dance. Everyone's everyone's making everyone dance at this point. Every time you come up with a new cool AI tool, everyone, like every major AI company has to try to clamor to uh, adopt and, and make the same thing. It's kind of like when Google made Notebook LM, went viral for that. All of a sudden we have 11 labs, like, hey, look, we can make an AI podcast right. tool too. Everyone's just trying to do it because no one wants to get left behind or let someone else get the edge. So I do love this. I feel like these companies some of them have been maybe called sleeping giants, right? Maybe a little bit of sleep at the wheel, getting a little comfortable in their cushy, you know, Google's hundreds of billions of dollars uh, and being the market leader for so long. And all of a sudden we have these new startups that are really eating into maybe their market share or, or have the potential to do that with their tech. It, it woke them up. Google, you cannot, yeah, you can say whatever agreed. you want about Google. They are not asleep anymore. I want to read um, Sundar Pichai's announcement about this. And if you're watching over on YouTube or Spotify, you can see some of the demo uh, videos of how this tool is actually working because essentially what it does um, is it takes over your Chrome browser and it can allow you to, um, it can allow you to give it a prompt and it's gonna take over your Chrome browser and accomplish a whole bunch of things. So this is what Sundar Pichai said about it. He said, we're investing in the frontiers of agentic capabilities with a few early prototypes. Project Mariner is built with Gemini 2.0. So this is also the new, new Gemini they just announced literally two hours ago. So they they already have this thing implemented into their latest thing. That's um, he said it's able to understand and reason across information, pixels, text, code, image, and forms on your browser screen, and then it uses that information to complete tasks for you. When evaluated against Web Voyager benchmark, it achieved a state-of-the-art result of, drum roll please, 83.5% working as a single agent setup. This is actually amazing. What? I'm excited for this. 83.5 working as a single agent setup. Guys, this is the thing that we want to get uh, our heads around. When it comes to agents, how far or how you know near are we to an AI agent future? Listen, uh, probably not super, super close, like not in the next few months, but at the end of 2025, we have to be. Now, why is this so critical beyond just Google? I want to get back to Google in a second. But here's the thing. If you work in any kind of corporate setting, you probably have, if you are at least a leader in that, uh, in any kind of way, you have to start setting goals, right? Especially if you're in the senior leadership level, you're talking about one, two, three years out. And okay, we are just now getting our heads around generative AI. What can this do? When you see agents, you realize, holy cow, like I was at the starting line and these people have already started the marathon an hour before I did. Now, first of all, you are not behind. But second of all, you have to understand that when you see what Google is doing with agents and when you see that they're going up against Anthropic and going up against uh, OpenAI and going up against uh, other giant uh, organizations doing this, they are in a race for survival. They are not going to slow down. So when you are doing your big strategic plans, you have to start counting on what agents, uh, AI agents will look like, probably not this year. But in a couple of years, you have to start thinking about this. So usually, Jaden, right? I'm kind of the one that's like... Guys, don't really worry about this. Not a big deal. It's fun to look at. Sora, it's really cool, but nothing's really going to happen with Sora in your world. This is going to impact your world. You may not have access yeah. to it right now, but knowing that it's out there, Jaden, right? Like this is what you're doing with AI Box. You are building tools that people can use for their own workflow. So you're keeping yeah. a close eye on this. How is this going to impact work uh, from your standpoint? 
I'm really excited. Uh, I've always been very bullish on AI agents. And I think, you know, we're building a lot of AI tools on our platform and letting people build those AI tools. And I think that they're going to, you know, go work hand in hand with these agents, so essentially going to tell an agent, hey, um, I want to accomplish this X, Y, and Z thing, go over to AI box, grab this tool, use that to accomplish the thing. And you're going to get, uh, it's going to have a, you know, a predetermined prompt, and it'll give you a really, um, an outcome that you can is very predictable and very high quality. So I'm excited about this. Okay, what I did want to mention, though, is the fact that this is sort of still, um, it's still like a prototype, right? This right. Thing isn't out in the wild 100%. Um, but and it's coming out of labs.google. So I wanted to actually show a little video um, that walks through what is going on here. You can hear this as well. It's audio as well. If you're just listening on Apple, but if you're on Spotify or YouTube, you'll be, you should be able to see this. Um, but it talks a little bit about this, this project, which is really kind of coming out of labs.google, which is DeepMind. So this is kind of their, their lab. And then I want to get your take on, on what they are saying here, Connor, after. Yeah. Today, I want to tell you about Project Mariner. It's a oh, and I wanted to ask Connor, can you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Okay, fantastic. Research prototype exploring the future of human agent interaction, and it's built on Gemini 2.0. Like with all new technology, it's important for us to build this responsibly, which is why we're starting small. We'll be getting feedback from a group of trusted testers and using their experiences to really shape how Project Mariner evolves. Let me show you how it works. So Project Mariner works in the browser as an experimental Chrome extension. I'm going to start by entering a prompt. Here, I have a list of outdoor companies listed in Google Sheets, and I want to find their contact information. So I'll ask the agent to take this list of companies, then find their websites and look up a contact email I can use to reach them. This is a simplified example of a tedious multi-step task that someone could encounter at work. Now. The agent has read the Google Sheet and knows the company names. It then starts by searching Google for benchmark climbing. And now it's going to click into the website. You can see how this research prototype only works in your active tab. It doesn't work in the background. Once it finds the email address, it remembers it and moves on to the next company. At any point in this process, you can stop the agent or hit pause. What's cool is that you can actually see the agent's reasoning in the user interface so that you can better understand what it is doing. And it will do the same thing for the next two companies, navigating your browser, clicking links, scrolling, and recording information as it goes. You're seeing an early stage research prototype, so we sped this up for demo purposes. We're working with trusted testers to make it faster and smoother and it's so important to keep a human in the loop. After the fourth website, the agent has completed its task, listing out the email addresses for me to use. Hmm. And there you have it. We're really just scratching the... Okay, so yeah. I, I thought this was so fascinating. One thing I wanted to say is how they, they mentioned, this is a demo, so we sped it up for demo purposes. <laughs> Google got so awesome. roasted with their previous demos, uh, <laughs> selectively editing, and people called them deceptive. So I think they're really trying to be transparent and honest, happy they so learned right. from that. But Connor, like, give me your take. What do you think about this? I mean, so this is the thing, right? So, like, if, you know, if you can watch this demo, and hopefully our audio audience can sort of, like, get a sense of it. But it was very, very impressive, right? It's sort of like, hey, I just need to do this task. Can you do it for me? And it will do it. For you. And remember, folks, this is just a prototype. I think one of the mistakes we make is, oh, well, you know, this is, you know, uh, this is amazing. It's going to do this right now. And this is going to change. No, this is just showing what it is going to do. I think one of the huge things that Jensen Huang of NVIDIA said was, I want a country of like, uh, sorry, a company of like 100 million agents. But remember that agents are essentially workers. You, you have to train them. When she says keep a human in the loop, it's sort of like, hey, if you're managing a team, you have to keep a human in the loop, right? You have to keep a manager in the loop to make sure people aren't going off the rails. It's the same thing. Remember, this is a tool that doesn't really behave like software. It behaves like a human. And so I think the really interesting thing is that this is giving a sense of where this is going to go. Right now, I don't know how useful it is because all that stuff that it's doing, you have to sort of like watch while it's navigating your computer. And what are you doing? Just kind of like sitting there, you know? So I think that what this is better at is giving you a sense of when these things can operate in the background and when they can do like really small specific tasks. Like, hey, go find who this person is and what they do. And that's the only task that this agent will do. That's when you have to start thinking about what tasks 
AI will take away and who in your organization has those tasks and what that does to their job as a whole. It's not about taking jobs. It's about taking tasks. But I got to say, Jaden, I thought that was super impressive. What, what were your thoughts on that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, I'm really excited uh, to see how this kind of transforms and moves forward. As we close out, I wanted to read uh, one last quote that I think really gives you a great uh, this is from the, the folks over at DeepMind, but it gives you a really great just way like understanding or, or thought, I guess, of how we really have to start thinking about this. They said Project Mariner is a fundamentally new UI paradigm shift that we're seeing right now. We need to figure out what is the right way for all of this to change the users inter how or to change the way users interact with the web and the way publishers can create experiences for users as well as for agents in the future. This is so fascinating to me because not only are you know, they, they're trying to think about like, how are people going to be using their computers if these agents are, are doing a lot of this stuff, but also like websites, you're going to get a whole bunch of traffic from these agents and not humans that are crawling your site. Like, can you charge for advertising to agents? Uh, you know, what are the, what are the, what are the rules about this? Are you going to get a whole bunch of bandwidth used because your website has a useful resource that all these agents are going to go to, but it costs you a ton of money and you're not going to be able to monetize it. Like there is a lot that is going to be shifting very quickly. That's why Connor and I, you know, always want to bring this up with you, um, yep. you know, on AI applied is because these are the things you absolutely have to be thinking about for yourself and for your companies. A hundred percent. This is it guys. Like this is the kind of thing that when you are doing your planning, we're at the end of the year, when you're doing your planning, know that this is on the horizon and start planning. Now you cannot just like all of a sudden do a U-turn in your battleship, especially if you are at a big company, but even if you're a part of a big team, uh, listen, the, the news we get, Jaden and I could be here all day and we would love to be here all day, but Jaden, as usual, is jet setting around that guy. We can't keep him in one place, but listen, if this year has inspired you with this podcast, just understand that I would be nothing on this podcast. If it was not for Jaden, Jaden has taught me the art of podcasting. The guy is an absolute master. He probably has like 30 podcasts that you don't even know about. And he has a course. The link will be in the description. Guys, 2025 should be the year you start your podcast. I'm telling you, this is the future. This is a way to sort of organize your thoughts, get your voice out there. Everybody starts small. Jaden started small. He's now closing in on 5 million <laughs> downloads. And listen, there's nothing special about Jaden's brain. He just understood and cracked the code on how to make podcast. And the guy is a crazy mad scientist. And I have seen his course. It's unbelievable. Guys, that's the only course you need. And I'm not pitching that because he's my buddy. I'm telling you, it's absolutely unbelievable. Use that, make it a gift to, uh, to your loved ones uh, this Christmas. It's going to be fantastic. And listen, have an amazing, keep up with the AI. We're going to try to help you, but have an amazing rest of your day.